Okay, everyone, welcome to Kitchen Party. As you know, it's our weekly show. Oh, yeah, we got to give it a little whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> you know, I, I'm in, I'm in a, an apartment where someone is asleep right now, so I feel so terrible to be too loud. So I'm going to go whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Like a little baby owl. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> And I'm hooting inside. She's hooting loud inside. <laughs> well, each week, as you know, we bring you the biggest names in food. And uh, we like to conduct Q&As each week to bring you um, all the information that you might need for, for your own inspiration for shows and blogs that you want to do. I'm so happy that we have uh, our special guest this week. But before we get to her, let's go to my co-host, Babette. Babette, where are you tuning in from? Renee, I'm in the UK. I am in London. I've had zero sleep since yesterday morning at like 9 a.m. I am, I, I'm feeling good because I'm excited. Like the city is amazing. I'm speaking at another food blogger conference on app development and cookbook authoring. So I'm really excited. But uh, and also one of my um, my my uh, housemate is a cookbook author as well. I know I feel so bad. Um, Monica and it's I, what is Monica's last name? It's bit bit. Uh, God, you guys know her. She does she does everything you need to know about Indian cooking. The book cookbook. Oh, it's right. Monica Bidet or but but I'll look it up. She's she's awesome. She's awesome. I will figure out her Twitter handle and get it back to you guys. But she's she's in D.C. We're actually talking about doing a tech munch in D.C. now, which would be really cool. Um, and I'm very happy. So in the food, so far I haven't really tried much food, uh, but I did go grocery shopping here, which was really cool. And I made a pizza in an oven that I had to plug in. I had to figure out how to plug it in. So that was it was very interesting. So I am really excited about talking about food I can find because maybe I can find I, some interesting stuff here. Um, I did get a uh, like a dairy rice. Uh, pudding that was kind of cool, and I got a couple of yogurts. So I'm trying to be a little experimental in the dairy aisle um, here in London, but it should be cool. We'll be here for a week, and uh, I'll be, you know, next week I'll be back in LA, and I'll hopefully I'll be able to show you some pictures and stuff from the conference. Oh, that's awesome. Well, hopefully our guest today will help you become a little more experimental in the dairy aisle, Babette. <laughs> that seems like it's a good segue. Taida, Aida, Mollenkamp, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? Thanks for I'm having well, me. Well, so where are you tuning in from? Um, down the street from you in, okay. <laughs> in my brand new dining room that I finally got chairs for, so I don't have to be a heathen and eat on the floor anymore. So, ah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, nice. So technically, the show is international, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Renee, it actually made me think. I was like, okay, it's one o'clock here in London. I think we should move our show up earlier so that we can get the you know the 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 European folks the uh, you know New York East Coasters and then everyone towards the West Coast because um, some of the food bloggers I'm meeting here are pretty amazing and I th I think they they'd really love to to see our show but it's it's on so late for them yeah. that there's just there's no they have to watch the recap they can never participate in the live show. Um, the timing doesn't work. Well, speaking of the live chat, uh, one of the things we like most about doing Kitchen Party each week is that we get to have input from the audience. Um, because after all, the show is really about about you, and we want to bring information to you. As I mentioned, our, our goal here is to help inspire you to do all the wonderful things that you want to do um, with your blogs and your uh, and your food businesses. And hopefully, uh, Aida will give us some tips and suggestions for, for how to do that. Uh, Aida, maybe we can ask you to kind of start by stepping back in time a little bit. How did you even enter the food world? How did you get started in this arena at all? Um, sure. So I think you know, Renee, that I am a native Angelino, grew up here in L.A., and when I was in high school, I, I would like to say that we had our kind of first food renaissance with, you know, Suzanne Goen and chefs like that really starting to come of age. Um, so for me, I actually wanted to do something totally different, and a knee injury made it so I could not fulfill my dreams of becoming a professional ballerina, and um, decided to express myself in the kitchen, and I got hooked, went to school for it, um, both in undergraduate uh, for hospitality and then to culinary school. And by the time I went to culinary school, I had driven past your offices at LA Times and the offices at Bon Appetit Magazine when it was still here enough times that I knew I wanted to get into editorial. I just didn't know 
how to literally get my foot in the door and find you guys. So um, I found a New York Times article about a kind of alternative magazine called Chow um, that has since gone from print to digital, bought by CBS Interactive a few years ago. Um, and so I was on the editorial staff there. Um, from there had a couple Food Network shows and they kind of came about totally by accident. I like, somebody found my telephone number. I'm not really sure how when I look back on it. Might have been some like privacy violation, but it was for the better. <laughs> because they found my telephone number, asked me to come in for um, a screen test, and then I got to do that. So um, the last couple years have been you know, trying to expand into all the platforms from the Google Hangouts like this to uh, a book I came out with about 18 months ago, and everything I do is kind of in the name of making every day delicious. I really believe that just a teeny bit more effort makes for a lot more awesome food and experiences. I like that. A teeny bit of effort makes for a lot more awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, you, you kind of came to that culinary point of view, um, kind of it wasn't a direct line, right? You had some switches along the way and you made some changes and uh, we have some people who kind of are struggling maybe to find their particular point of view or they feel like they need to be niche, no, 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 you need to be broad. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that before we get into some more of the, the specifics of our, our conversation for National Dairy Month. Of course. Um, so let me see. I think we hit on this a little bit at Tech Munch uh, when it was at Disneyland a few months ago. Um, and it, it is really interesting to see some people like the fabulous blend Tess at Blender Girl and Jackie Dodd of Beerness to have such success by finding their niche. And um, as I've had conversations with both of you, you guys know that I'm a little bit more of a jack of all trades. But even so, I believe you still have to have focus within that um, you know, wide net that you cast. So for me, I there was something about growing up in LA when I did that felt very multi-ethnic and that influenced my cooking enough that it's with me today. Um, and so I, I had to really go through all those. I, I'm, I'm a very analytical person. So for me, I had to go through all those like, you know, Brandy 101 exercises where I figured out my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats where I wrote down, you know, pro, like, ad, ad, adjectives I uh, relate to, adjectives I have no relation to, and through doing this, over and over and over again and paying attention to the cuisine that I was drawn to, I've come to where I am. But, you know, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's a never-ending process. It's something that I continue to whittle every single day to refine and refine and refine. Well, it seems like it reflects the, uh, the world of food itself, right? It's constantly kind of evolving and changing and we kind of have to, have to move along with that. Um, <clears throat> I'm just curious, did you take any particular classes or books or how did you go through all of those, those exercises that you did to hone your focus? Um, because I had a background in um, in hospitality, that, that background in my undergrad had me go through basic branding classes, but um, for blogging in particular, I actually have it right in front of me. Um, I will show it to you. I find this book, Blog Inc. by Joy Cho, really, really helpful. Um, this I look back at this book probably every six months because even though I've now had my website for three years, there's little things in here. There's things from what's your focus and how do I make money all the way to refining relationships, collaborations like we're doing right now today. So um, yeah, Blog Inc. is very, very helpful. We'll have to send out a link to that book on, uh, on Amazon later. That sounds great. Um, if you're following along at home, uh, please use the Kitchen Party hashtag on Twitter. You can do it on uh, Google Plus, too, because we'd like to make sure that we ask your questions. Although I have to say, I'm noticing some glitchy stuff with, with Twitter right now. And I know earlier in the newsroom, people were running around like chickens with their heads cut off because they were like, Twitter's down, Twitter's down, what happened? So if we're not getting to your message right away on Twitter, just know that we're, we are looking for it and we're, we are trying to get to that soon. Hey, Renee, I want to put a shout out to the folks on who are watching on Google+. Uh, we have, who just logged in is, I'm going to totally murder these names and I'm so sorry, but they're very fascinating names nonetheless. Uh, I think it's Fina Dend Denzi, also tuned in, Francois Villa. Why are all of our 
audience name so difficult. <laughs> That's what I want to know. That's the first question I want to know. Francois Villeneuve. Um, we also have Cynthia Lazama. And then we have Eric Deutsch. Uh, we have Anthony Sanchez also um, had posted the check in. Michelle Jenkins, Elizabeth Florina. And there's, this is 13 others um, have also checked in uh, in the next in the last couple minutes. So I wanted to give a shout out to those folks. If you guys are watching on the Google Plus page or on the YouTube channel, leave a comment, and then we'll get back to you. Um, we'll we'll follow along. And if we don't get back to you, your questions um, during the show, we'll make sure we follow up afterwards as well. Um, all right. My Twitter finally seems to be uh, to to be kicking in. Um, we've got Easy Home Meals, of course, tweeted saying, a tiny bit of effort makes for a whole lot of awesome in the kitchen. We totally agree with that. And uh, um, Michelle Jenkins, Amish Jenkins, uh, she says, Babette, that she loves your Union Jack backdrop art. She says it's awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was in the, the house, and I'm like, what could be my backdrop? And I tried to do it Perfect. where I would have, like, the kitchen behind me. But I am in the kitchen still. But I'm like, where is this? And I turned it around and I thought, look at that! Look at that painting. I thought that's perfect. That's a perfect painting for for this. Um, you know, speaking of uh, easy home meals, uh, I think it's really cool that um, you know I I went to the website. We we teamed up with them, Renee. We we teamed up with them uh, for this national like to launch and kick off National Dairy Month, which um, I'm a huge dairy person. Just just plain like if there's one thing I go to it's ice cream or it's cream cheese or it's you know it's my lactate milk whatever it is that is my, my, my top um, three are cheese cheese and cheese yeah I <laughs> But what I what I thought was really cool was um, that how much the website uh, really highlights a lot of the the cool, really interesting bloggers that that have been able to not only turn their recipes into I don't know if Melody can put it big on the screen, but has been able to turn their recipes into oh there's I saw that picture that was amazing Aida you look amazing in that um, you're that too sweet image you look great. Um, you know, I, I liked that they really highlighted unique recipes. It wasn't just how are we going to make a casserole, how are we going to make this. It was how can we put a new spin on it. So I think the, the focus of today's chat is really um, when you're in the grocery store this summer, how do you make that experience um, much more unique? Because we all have to, we all have to keep cool somehow. But the dairy aisle is perfect to do that um, not just because everything is grouped together because it's you know it's cold but because that's literally you're gonna try to cool down this summer um, and I just was really impressed with some of the recipes that they've been able to come up with that have put me you know made me kinda of get outside my box a little bit and be like well I don't have to just eat regular ice cream I can try something unique and interesting <laughs> um, so Aida you, you are a self-proclaimed dairy junkie What's what's your what's your advice? Uh, well, I I think it's got to be cheese. Um, I blame it on the fact that my dad married a French woman. It's all her fault. <laughs> <laughs> she would like I'd come home from school and she'd be making cheese souffles on a Tuesday night, and so like I there was no hope for me. Um, so I I definitely experiment. I went to culinary school in France, so actually um, I gave myself a challenge while I lived there that every time I went to the store I would get a different cheese and sometimes it was fabulous and I found a new cheese I had never heard of like Mimolette is an amazing cheese kind of like a Gouda and sometimes I would have a horrible experience like those really smelly cheeses that kind of become monsters and take over your whole apartment with the stench so um, definitely cheese is my thing but these days um, you know, I really go all across the dairy aisle. Um, a lot this time of year, it's not getting too hot in LA yet, but I know some parts of the nation already are pretty hot. And this time of year, I definitely turn to the smoothies. Um, and I do a lot of almond milk smoothies. So um, I like the unsweetened almond milk so that I can kind of dress it up as I as I please, and I start my day off with that. What What else do you put in there other than almond milk? Oh, well, it, I think it changes based on, I, I'm one of those people who tries to go to Hollywood Farmer's Market over the weekend and then put whatever is starting to get old in there, <laughs> so um, 
So, you know, I have my Green Goddess smoothie on my website that I make all the time that is um, mango when it's in season, some bananas, some almond milk, and um, coconut, just flaked coconut. And then, you know, the other day I was trying out my friend Beth uh, at Tasty Yummies. Uh, I was trying out her peach and pistachio and coconut and almond milk uh, smoothie, so that was good. And tomorrow I've got some of my blueberries that are starting to kind of hit their last moments of fabulousness, so they're going to be going in there, but I'm not sure what else is going in yet. You'll have to ask me in a few hours. <laughs> and, and you mentioned uh, where we can find that recipe on your website. What's your website name? Uh, it's my name.com, so Iedamallencamp.com. Also a difficult name, Babette, as if you have an easy name. <laughs> you're acting like you're the one with the super, like, Jane Smith name. I know. It's like, papage, papai, what? <laughs> you know, that's a good point. That's a good point. You guys kind of have me on that one. But maybe it's because I have a difficult name that I can say it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, I have to tell you guys, you have to see this photo that is on Twitter. Um, Francois posted a picture of, it. it look, I believe it's her, her grandson looking at uh, us on, on Skype on an iPad, and her son is touching the, the camera because I, she says he thinks that's he. That's you're his grandmother, Ada. Oh, <laughs> like, yes, so, yeah. this is awesome. such a sweet little photo of him, like touching the camera, trying to get at you. It's like so sweet. <laughs> that's fabulous. <laughs> oh, it's gonna Pretty make you friend. smile, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna love it. I have a quick question. Can you guys hear Eric snoring on the couch? No. <laughs> no. Okay, good. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's he is exhausted as I am, but he he fell asleep and he there he goes <laughs> he just woke up, which is good. Well, let's let's stay focused, guys. Now, how did you how did you hook up for National Dairy Month? How, how did that came come about? Because a lot of the food bloggers who are watching the show, um, they want to work with brands and they want to start building relationships. So, do you have any advice for? Um, maybe some of the food bloggers, who, or even some of the organizations that are thinking about working with food bloggers, like why does this why does this work so well, and and what, what's that been like for you? Um, well, I have I, I was approached by NFRA, the National Refrigerated Foods Council, so um, I can't speak to that specific relationship, but I have realized that the same way I've tried to keep conversation going on Twitter just amongst fellow food bloggers that same formula works for working with brands. So, for example, um, I was just traveling last month and I flew Turkish Airlines for the first time ever and it was a phenomenal experience. And they are trying to do this initiative, um, which I'm forgetting their hashtag right now, it's on their Facebook page, but long and short of it is I've been stalking them with the hopes that we will eventually work together. So I've been kind of pointing to content that I think works for them. Um, you know, I, I would like to be traveling uh, covering more and more travel. So that has worked for me to kind of start these Twitter conversations. Brands tend to be very receptive with that. Um, and then the other thing that um, my friend Erica at PS I Made This, which if there's anybody who's a DIY or crafting person on our party today, they might have heard of her. Um, she's infinitely popular uh, with brands and one of the things she told me she does is when she does get approached by a PR person and it's some pitch that just is not what she wants to be doing she instead looks at who else that PR person works with at their website and um, you know are there other clients you could be working with of theirs and then says no thank you but ellipse 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 that's smart that is so smart that is a great Tip. Yeah, yeah. That's, a that's, been, tip. that's been already working for me, and I've only been using it for two months, so that's a big one. That is an excellent one. You know, why is the why is the dairy aisle so intimidating? Is it because it's freezing and and people like try to like get into it and get the heck out, or is it because everything seems so packaged that you just don't have the no, just people don't have the imagination to be able to do anything interesting? I think it's because dairy we kind of get stuck in ruts with dairy, right? Like you grew up, in, I mean, I know this from my boyfriend. We first met each other. He grew up eating 
or drinking low fat milk and that was all he wanted to drink and um, I you know with my cookbook keys to the kitchen and with the work I do I always try to encourage people to try one new thing every time they go shopping or you know like I did with those cheeses in France um, and I think if you do that in the dairy aisle you're gonna realize everything is kind of related right like coconut milk works a lot of the same ways almond milk does works a lot of the same ways regular milk does um, and because we have so many alternative bloggers and recipes out there by great magazines you can find a lot of interesting ways to use them so I think now more than ever you can go through the dairy aisle find exciting stuff that you're not confident with and it's just a website click away to figure out how it can be um, great but I don't know I think it's you know find what you're comfortable with so if you're a cheese fanatic like Renee then just find another cheese that you might be scared of like I don't know I know a lot of people don't like or haven't tried halloumi and in the summertime halloumi is a grillable cheese and it is perfect for you know if you have vegetarian friends coming over and you don't know what to make them you can just add those to your kebabs and you've got a whole nother level of flavor going on oh my god I love halloumi it is so if you haven't tried it you have to try it it is the best it is the best that is a great tip that is a great tip but I do think that sometimes people are a little intimidated they may see that and think okay grilling cheese how does that work I'm gonna now have to go find a recipe I don't wanna you know they may feel like it's just one more thing that they have to do as opposed to finding a tried and true and tossing it in their tossing it in their cart yeah I mean for sure and I, I by no means I, I think we have our favorites when we go to food shopping for a reason so like I'm not asking you to change your whole life around um, but I think just small changes like one of the recipes I did for easy home meals this summer um, is a peach and blueberry popsicle and I used Greek yogurt to make it instead of just all 100% dairy and you know if you haven't tried Greek yogurt before then you can try that recipe and then you can also try it the next morning with just some fruit and honey on it and then you can kind of work it into your life instead of totally starting fresh so I think maybe find a recipe find an ingredient you're not 100% comfortable with try it out and then you know go from there oh I like that as opposed to going to the store and saying I'll try this and then you're kind of then you still have the burden when you get home of trying to find a, a recipe for it so I like that I like turning that around a little bit I think that makes it a little easier to try something yeah Hey, we have on um, we have on our Google Plus page. We have a couple people who checked in as well. Kathy Stutzman um, said, "Mama Caruso here. What's up?" Hey. Uh, and then also Sarah Davis also checked in. If you guys are watching and you're able to um, post on our Google Plus page or on Twitter using the hashtag Kitchen Party, why don't you guys tell us what your favorite product is in the um, or or even your just your overall theme of of what you find in the in the da dairy aisle? Are you guys a cheese person? Are you milk? Are you yogurts? Like what? What when you think of the dairy aisle, what what comes to your mind? And let, let's see maybe how many of the folks who are watching um, have an affinity to ice cream, <laughs> like me. Then I won't feel so bad. <laughs> well, well, Babette over on uh, on Twitter, uh, Mitch Jenkins uh, says the dairy aisle is more diverse than ever, especially in a regular supermarket. You've got Labne, Greek yogurt, cream cheese fresh mozzarella that has been a revelation right like remember it used to be that you would have to go find some fancy cheese store to get a lot of those things and now they're just showing up at just the regular kind of a Ralph's right or a Vons even yeah, yeah I'm gonna show you guys something interesting well then this is a product I just got tonight hold on and then Cochina uh, Cocina Chronicles or maybe it's Cochina Chronicles also tunes in and says, "Is dairy the new kale?" <laughs> I love it. I don't know if anything can ever be the new kale. I know. I know. <laughs> um, did you guys see that? What is it called? Panda Express put a shiitake kale bowl on their menu. No. I'm kale sorry, Express, put... you guys, it's here to stay. <laughs> you know, you know what's weird is um, with Panda Express, I was so upset because they took out the eggplant and tofu which is as a vegetarian the only thing I could eat that wasn't just veggies it was really it was upsetting and I remember one day I was so hungry I go in there and I'm like where's my tofu and they're like oh we don't make that anymore and I had a meltdown in the Hollywood Panda Express <laughs> it was embarrassing um, but I wanted to show you something really cute first of all look at how cute this little milk is it's so tiny yeah. it's so it's like a 
It's like personal mm -hmm. size. And then I found this that I thought was kind of interesting. This is a this is a live gourmet yogurt. And it ha it's passion fruit, so you can see the passion fruit at the bottom. I don't Ooh, know if you guys can good. see that. It's kind of interesting, so I'm going to try that. And then I think this is from the conference, I think. It's maple butter. So I think I'm going to try. They're like individual little maple butters oh. that I'm going to try. It's really good. So let's just see. Also, just so you know, I'm not drinking any alcohol tonight, which is uh, which is kind of a bummer because I forgot to get some alcohol at the grocery store. <laughs> but my the people who are putting the conference on, which is Flu Food Blogger Connect in London, gave me this stuff called Kasarak, which I th almost think she said it is drinkable as alcohol. However, she also said I can cook with it. So I was like. How 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 heavy can this be? So I've decided not to open it and give it a taste, um, and figure then I won't get myself so intoxicated. So tomorrow, I'll, like I'll be flatlined. Okay, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the dairy stuff back okay. so it um, so it stays in the refrigerator. You guys discuss amongst yourselves. Oh, of course. You know, I like the little uh, the little kind of cup size or tiny little thimble size thing of butter that she had, and also the small milk. And I wish more stores would offer things like that because I think it would maybe encourage somebody to try something something new or different because I hate bringing something home and then thinking, wow, I really don't like this. It's one thing to have to look for other recipes to use it up, but it's another thing to be like, oh, this just doesn't work for me. Right, yeah, no, 100%. I mean, I uh, I, I completely relate to that, and I, I don't, I can't think of any place that does that. So yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully more people will do that. Although I guess there's a downside to it too, right? The smaller packages mean more stuff going into the garbage. So I, I don't know. Maybe there's no winning, right? There's just something. There's going to be a problem on one side or the other, right? You have to make it all your own. That's the <laughs> homesteading. Have you ever tried to make any cheeses yourself? Yeah, yeah. I've made a lot of cheeses myself. Um, I ran the test kitchen at Chow for five years, so I think we've we made all the major cheeses. Um, I have made even soy milk, um, and I actually make nut milk a lot, um, so I think all those are, are pretty easy. I, I tend to buy nuts in huge bulks. I don't know about you guys, but I'll buy like the size of my head of walnuts or pistachios or almonds and then I'm sitting there and I've kept them in the fridge and months have gone by and I haven't used them all. So um, I'm always looking for new little experiments to try on the weekend and um, definitely making cheese has gotten in there. I've made mozzarella. I've never made anything like, I've never made ricotta, have you? I have and you know what, it's so easy to make and it's so delicious. It's so yeah. incredible. We had a the LA Times Test Kitchen had a recipe, uh, I think maybe two years ago. Our food editor um, created it. And I mean, there are a lot of recipes out there for um, ricotta cheese, of course, but this is one that came out of our test kitchen. And we loved it, and it's so easy to make. It's the kind of thing that you really can kind of put together at a moment's notice. Yeah. Um, whereas some of the other cheeses take a little more time and stuff. But I'll, I'll tweet that recipe out. Um, but people may like that. But um, so it's interesting that you mentioned uh, mozzarella because Mama Caruso uh, said over on Twitter, she said, "I'd love to know what do you choose, store bought or homemade? All things being equal." I mean, all things being equal, as in not ha having a bunch of time to make my own homemade cheeses. Is that <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> because that's the thing is, in the dairy, it, it, there are so many good products out there. I mean, I think the greatest thing about the explosion of the food culture in the last 10 years is that, like you were saying, at the average grocery store you have really good options. Um, so yeah, if I had all the time in the world, every weekend I would have made my own cheese. Sorry, trash cans are being taken in next door. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I I say leave it to, sometimes leave, like, leave things like that to the professionals who uh, who, if if you have an amazing recipe and it calls for something and the, it's one item you could make totally from scratch, that's really cool and it's great. But if there's so many people who are so pressed for time, that if the product is delicious and it's made with whatever is the organic stuff or whatever it is that's important to you, gluten free, celiac, whatever the um, the health concern is, it's it's good to know that that product achieves that, so you don't have to kind of muddle in the kitchen on something and then maybe, 
I'm terrible. Sometimes I'll destroy a recipe and it's it's over. So I'd rather just start with the very best ingredients and then put it together and that's where my magic happens. Yeah, yeah I, I have to say when it comes to mozzarella, I've made it several times. I've made it a few times where I feel like I got this great milk um, and then the recipe did not come together so I just destroyed it. I felt like I wasted so much and then yeah. I've made it where it's come together but I kind of feel like that's something that I want to leave to the professionals yeah. but ricotta cheese is so is something that's so easy that if you can get high quality ingredients also from the refrigerated aisle of course that it's something that you can put together with confidence without thinking like oh is this gonna is this not gonna make it but mozzarella can be a little temperamental I think. It, maybe because the consistency is already a little like it's it's um I don't know how you want to say it, but you know the consistency of that stuff. So I'm saying maybe because it's a little forgiving. So you, you know what? Totally. totally. <laughs> but. You're like, it's a little runny. Don't worry about it. It'll, it'll go into the, into the noodles, into the noodles. So no, you know, like, it works with everything, I think, is also the benefit, right? You make a cheese, like a yeah. cheese like that, feta and ricotta, I use across the board in pestos, I mean, in, in pastas, in dips, like everywhere. So um, at least once you've made it and you like the recipe, then... You have plenty of ways to use it. <laughs> you know, I made a, I was looking at some of the stuff that, um, like, just some of the tips that you were giving, that we had we had seen before the show, and I love you. You have a, a, a marinade and a sauce for steak that combines sour cream and horseradish. I I love the idea of blending the two products together to make something like better than the, the sum of their parts. Do you have any of those other um, combinations that the folks who are watching at home who may want to try this summer, maybe for a barbecue or, you know, maybe for morning breakfast, how can you do a new spin on, cre you know, we do cream cheese and literally it's like the whipped cream cheese and that's it. And I put a slice of tomato on top and I'm done. Anything yeah. else you can you can do suggest? You ever do a whipped feta instead of your cream cheese? Because I really like whipped feta. You I mean, like, no. just throw the feta in your food processor and let it do its thing until it has the air. And then, you know, you can add in some roasted peppers if you happen to have those hanging around late summer. Or, um, I I always buy, like, bundles of herbs and have a bunch left over, so I put them in stuff like cream, whipped cream cheese and whipped feta. So, But I never, I never buy store-bought cream cheese that's whipped. Do you? Oh, I do. That's the only thing we buy because it's easier to spread. Yeah, I don't. I buy regular cream cheese because I have kind of become this like whipper of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always have to have emergency supply of cream cheese and butter to make cheesecake on demand. Therefore, the regular cream cheese gets whipped in the food processor when I need it. That's okay, key. I <laughs> love this idea, but. Walk me, walk me through it. Both the whipped feta and then the whipped cream cheese. Are you putting it in a food processor or using a hand blender? How are you doing that? Um, so my stand mixer died on me recently, so I like that you even brought up a hand blender because I kind of <laughs> my own one until about a few weeks ago, and I've been getting like such strong forearms as a result of using that. So in this instance, I just use the pulse button on the food processor, um, but. The cream cheese can just go in by itself, but the feta, I find that you need to put another ingredient in, ingredient in with it in order to get a good consistency going. So a classic one for me is, like, I always have jarred uh, roasted peppers or roasted peppers if I have made them myself and throw them in there um, with the feta. And sometimes I'll even make kind of a twist on a romesco sauce and, you know, add in some walnut, add in some bread and what have you. depends on oh, who's oh, coming out. So great. If I'm having vegans or celiacs or who, who's coming out. I've got to pay attention to all the diets these days. <laughs> oh, I love I love that. Have you had those little, um, they seem to be cropping up more and more at olive bars. Like, I think they're called papadou peppers. Like, they're I little, small, that. like, I, that would be so good in feta, don't you think? You know what I do with papadou? So I love that you brought this up because I love papadou. I actually have a... A article on my website called um, Last Fridays with one of my dear friends and once a month we get together and do a virtual cocktail hour um, and so last summer we were making like these little Campari cooler watermelon things and we couldn't figure out what to put it with them and we found a bunch of Pepidus and we found that of all the cheeses goat cheese is actually the best with a Pepidu. A little bit of tang like not too salty, works really well with like the sweet brain, mm, really good. But you're whipping that as well? No, you don't have to. 
You don't have to. So you, you just serve it, it alongside you with goat it, cheese. Like soft enough to be spreadable, and then you can stuff it in the pepper dip. Oh, oh my gosh! Stuff wow. It in, stuff it in the pepper dip. <laughs> I think you just gave me my summer appetizer. Two oh, of them. <laughs> it's okay. feta it's with herbs. It's, and it's like a new charcuterie board, you know. Uh -huh. It's like a modern charcuterie board with the pepper dip. Yeah. Yeah, I also love the charcuterie board because it feels like even though so much of that can be done in advance, um, it just feels so luxurious when you have people come over and you have that, maybe a glass of Prosecco or four, and it just feels like it's like a great, you feel like you've done something when really it's it's like you've just let the ingredients speak for themselves and stayed out of the way. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to have to send you a picture of that when I try it. <laughs> Ada, your, your recipes are so flavorful, but they're also really elegant and, and interesting, and you do a lot of like snack-sized um, recipes, which I think are great because summer parties, people are standing around, they're by the pool, they're hanging out, and like they're on the go. So can you give, and do you have any suggestions on some snack-sized recipes that people can make for some of their summer parties? And also, if you, do you have any tips on, you know, if... If I'm ha if I have cream cheese in my refrigerator and I'm going to throw a party, like what else can I do? How can I spin that into something interesting? And you don't have to say cream cheese, but you can you can use anything you want. Because I know you use biscuit dough a lot. Um, oh but can you give you coming back to cream cheese? That that's like so. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to talk about the cream cheese. I'm talking about right. cream cheese enough. That's what I'd like to talk about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. I um, I, let me see. I do make a lot of small bites. I think it's also because there's a lot of small ones in our family right now. We have five. I have five nieces and nephews, and I found that they're willing to try new foods if I make it just a couple bites. <laughs> they don't have to commit as much. Um, so one I've been doing a lot of is using um, refrigerated potatoes, like the refrigerated hash browns, and then lining muffin tins with those and then cooking those off. Because I used to do that and do like the big jumbo muffin tins, line them with hash browns. Um, you just spray them with some non stick spray, put them into the crispy, and then you could put an egg in there and have like a really instant baked egg breakfast. But a couple months ago, I started making little mini ones in a mini muffin tin, and then I basically realized I could make little potato slider deals. What do you call those things that you get at the happy hour bar? Why am I not? <laughs> like sliders, right? Potato, potato I've never heard of potato sliders. That sounds delicious. <laughs> potato skins. So basically oh, I've potato skins. potato skins with hash browns. And I they're they're like now requested because you can make, you know, the little potato cup and then add in smoked salmon and creme fraiche and have like little almost blini type things if you want to be fancy fancy. Or you can go a little more, you know, I don't know, you're watching the World Cup or your, the NBA or whatever, and you can put in some cheese, maybe crisp bacon, chorizo, something like that, and make it a little more party friendly. So I've been doing the, the refrigerated potato snacks a lot, and there's actually a version of that on easyhomemeals.com. Mm. Um, another one is the one I have right here that you asked me to make for today which is this little prosciutto parmesan pinwheels. Oh. They look like little, <laughs> with little heads. Um, so basically these are little rounds. You can make this with um, refrigerated puff pastry or pie, pie dough. Um, I keep pie dough in the freezer all the time. And then these are basically everything I always have on hand. Some pesto, some prosciutto, a little bit of parmesan, a little bit of mozzarella. Um, and they're really simple to make. And why I like them is I made these earlier today, and they are great room temperature. So they're one of those things like you can turn on your oven in the morning and then have it off when it gets hot in the middle of the day uh, during summertime. Um, and then I think my absolute favorite, though, is I, I just like popsicles during the summertime. Doesn't everybody? And you can use, like, little mini Dixie cups or the little silicone um, ice cube trays and just make mini ones. And if you need to smoke them for Babette, you could do that too. <laughs> That's really funny. You know, you know, I love all of the mini things because it allows you to maybe splurge just a little bit, but still kind of keep your portion control, which is something that people, some, you know, they want if they're going to a party, they don't want to overeat, but they want to try a little bit of everything. 
So I just think it just makes it so nice for people to taste a little bit of a lot of delicious stuff. Well, and let's be honest, if you're a cheeseaholic like I am, if there's like a whole block of cheese ahead of you, you'll just like slice off, walk away, <laughs> slice off, walk away, slice off, walk away. So I found that in these little recipes, I'm like, okay, I've had actually two different pieces of it. I'm stopping now. <laughs> you're right. There is a portion control element to it, for sure. Um, but yeah, you also said like biscuit dough, and I, there's, there's just a lot of refrigerated doughs. I'm trying to get my sister... Um, to cook a lot more, and she she always she's one of those people who you know that friend of yours who like wants to make the really fancy thing, but they have no idea how much time goes into it and effort. So she was like, I want to make this breakfast galette that has like fifty thousand ingredients and blah blah blah. Well, you know, then we pull out the refrigerated pie dough, um, or she wanted to make a cobbler um, over the holidays, and I just had her use the biscuit dough as little toppers for the cobbler instead of making them herself. So things like that I think take the fear out of trying new baking recipes. I, I love like pre-made dough because we went to a party recently. Actually she's at Serena on Twitter and she had a party actually this is probably a couple years ago and it was a make your own pizza party and she everyone got she got the dough from Trader Joe's in the refrigerator aisle and, and she basically, everyone had their own dough, and then you could bring your own ingredients. So you can bring your own cheese that you want, you can bring your own, if, if you're a vegetarian or whatever, and we all made our own pizzas, and it was hilarious, because we're all like trying to roll out our pizza dough, <laughs> get it all easy, even, and it was so much fun. I keep thinking about that. Like That's that would a great be idea for a party. I love that. I just it, it tweeted really out cool. the recipe for the loaded potato nest, and now I'm going to tweet out that recipe for the... Um, for the pinwheels, because uh, I think people will enjoy it. So I'm going to do that right now. Thank you. Now, Aida, do you I, keep I, stuff? Oh, not bad, though. Like the the like themed cooking parties always seem to be fun, right? Absolutely. Like our friend Gabby, who you guys are going to have on next week, had a bruschetta bar last week, and like I love doing shave ice bars during the summertime, and then you can add in fun stuff or ice cream bars for you, Babette. <laughs> How do you do the shaved ice bars? Um, shave ice bars, you have to go on Amazon and get a little shave ice machine, so it's t it requires like a little, a little a one. <laughs> yeah, it requires a little bit of extra effort, however, you can then make them for kids, you can make them adult, I mean, you have to want to throw caution to the wind with regards to how much sugar you're going to eat, though, of course, if you're going to do shave ice, because it's all sugary. That's fun, though. I love I love those things. You know, we've had a ice cream truck that's been going down our street lately, and I I've been there for ten years, and I had never seen an ice cream truck go down the street. Now all of a sudden, it's like I hear the little like jingle, and there's like little excitement inside of me where I'm like, the ice cream truck is here. <laughs> Maybe I should go check it out. Now if the ice cream truck had cream cheese, now I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> But that's the thing. You could make you could make little frozen frozen cream cheese parfaits. I mean, I'm just saying. You know, you make like a little no bake cheesecake situation and freeze that up during the summertime. I'm all about frozen desserts during the summertime. Okay, wait. I want to know more about that. I stopped my tweeting to tune back in. I was like, what? <laughs> so walk me through that. <laughs> I like how I have to walk. You're like, no, stop. Um, so I actually will. I, I don't know why I've never written a recipe for these. Um, I just take a no-bake cheesecake recipe. So um, at the basis, it's basically just the cream cheese in a food processor with whatever milk you use. So whether that's milk, almond milk works fine, coconut milk works fine, enough sweeteners you like, and then whatever flavoring you'd put in your regular you know, cheesecake, vanilla extract, what have you. And then you just layer it in one of those little mason jars you know, you can layer it with like crumbled up cookie crumbs or graham crackers or chocolate chips or because I'm on a toasted coconut kick lately, toasted coconut, and then you put them in the freezer and just serve them to your friends as your dessert. And that way you have a like pre-prepared dessert for when you're entertaining and it looks all fancy but you didn't even bake it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And again, a little, a little tiny bite will go a long way. So I just tweeted out those two recipes for the pinwheels and also the potato nest, because I think people will, uh, will enjoy that. Yeah, the potato nests are really addictive, though. So it like might make <laughs> your cheese problem even worse, at least in my case. 
I have I, no problem with worsening the cheese problem. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I made them, we were watching uh, NBA playoffs, and I made them for a bunch of friends, and they just, like, kept requesting more. It was, like, autopilot eating the little potato nest, so be careful. I think I, I, I think I could do that. that. That'll also be good for uh, to watch the Kings win the Stanley Cup, right? Because that's what's going to happen. We shall see. I hope so. <laughs> that would be nice. You know, Renee, it's very rare that all three of us will be from Los Angeles in one kitchen party. That's right. That's right. So, go Kings. Go Kings. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, now, Ida, you are so, first of all, you're so beautiful and you're so just like lovely. Do you snack throughout the day? Because I find when I snack throughout the day, like the weight just keeps coming on and just keeps coming on. How, how do you, how do you stay so, um, so skinny and, and beautiful and, Oh, thank you. Um, I don't I eat a lot. I don't snack. Um, I I try my best not to snack. So it obviously depends. Certain days, I it's like all I want is chocolate all day because who doesn't have that day? Also, some days I just want almond butter. Anybody else have that where you're just like want almond butter and just? I want chocolate and almond butter, like a little. Oh, that happens too. That happens too. <laughs> Graham cracker, almond butter, chocolate. Maybe, maybe that happens. Um. But yeah, I mostly eat three meals, and then I'll let myself have something as a snack if I'm really hungry in between lunch and dinner. Um, but what would that be like? What, what would what would sustain you during between lunch and dinner? Well, I I mean again coming back to our love for cheese, I, I in this fall I love really good pears with a little bit of honey and some you know like manchego or pecorino or something like that. Um, a lot of times I'll eat yogurt. I don't. I sometimes skip breakfast, which I know. Don't tell my dad; he'd be really upset with me. He gets really un unhappy about that. Um, but I will sometimes do yogurt in the afternoon instead. In which case, it's usually yogurt. I make a lot of homemade granola, so yogurt, granola, and a little bit of berries. But um, I don't know. I I try to eat bigger meals so I don't snack as much and I think everybody has to just learn to listen to their body so for me I realized about 10 years ago that higher fat that's quality fat like more plant-based works better for me so that's why I like the Greek yogurt that's you know always in my fridge um, as a dairy fat and then I use like a lot of olive oil when I'm cooking and you know it's Mediterranean diet I'm Italian American that's how we do Although those pepidus make their way in every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be bad, right? No. I mean, it's the everything in moderation, including moderation. Right. I mean, they maybe have like a tiny bit of sugar on them, but I, 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 th I say put them in your salads. I like that. <laughs> or your whipped or your whipped feta. I'm definitely going to try that. Do it. <laughs> hey, hey, Renee, because it's National D uh, Dairy Month, what dairy do you have in your refrigerator? You know, um, I... Seriously, I love half and half in my coffee to the point where I would almost say, ah, I won't have coffee if I don't have half and half in it. Um, I'd rather drink it black than uh, not have half and half in it. So I almost always have half and half um, in my fridge. And I probably have, no exaggeration, 10 different types of cheeses in the fridge at any kind. And I, t I like to joke that my husband uh, is like my baby cat because I have to buy, I feel like I go to the store and buy milk and come home, turn around, and I need to go back to the store and buy more milk for my baby calf. So there's always milk, <laughs> there's always half and half, and there's always like a million cheeses. So if the apocalypse yeah. hits, come over to my house, I've got it taken care of. <laughs> as long as the fridge still works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there's that. <laughs> You know, it's funny that you say that about the coffee because I have a thing where if if I'm having, like I go through phases where I'm like, that's it, no more creamer, like no more creamer for my coffee, It's I'm putting too much in it, it's terrible, it's empty calories, da 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 da, whatever, then I'll have a really bad day and I'll be like, if I don't get that creamer, I, I need to reset this day, like I need to get this back on track and I'll go to, like, to the grocery store and I'll just buy my favorite creamer and I'll just say forget it I'll just I, I it's like the one thing that I give up that I know will start my day off right um, and any suggestions on and maybe you know some of the, the higher fat creamers any suggestions on, on what I could replace with those that still have that same kind of sweet flavor or some flavoring and some cream but 
maybe you can cut down a little bit on the calories? That's a good question. I am unlike you guys and drink my coffee very black. Um, so I I don't know. I know a lot of people have done make your own creamers, but um, I don't know if you just tried any of the alternative milks that have a little bit of sweetener in them. Because I don't know I how much, how much sugar is in a is in regular creamer. Oh, a lot, right? Too much. <laughs> So have you tried like lightly sweetened nut milk or something like that? No, I have not. But I but sometimes when I try like if I try like an I think I have tried an almond milk. Okay. It just seems like it makes the consistency too yeah. thin. Yeah. yeah. Like Okay. Like yeah. I want when I drink my coffee, I want Yeah, and I think I'm just gonna have to accept the fact that I am an addict of coffee <laughs> creamer. And I would give I would You're give right. coffee creamer up before I'd give coffee creamer up. Let's see, when what, what would I give? I would give chocolate up before I gave coffee creamer up. That is blasphemous. You should never <laughs> say that. <laughs> That's what I, I'm. But I'm trying to explain to you the severity of my addiction. <laughs> you scared me with that statement. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, maybe it's, maybe it's kind of what Aida said before that you kind of like maybe choose your indulgence there and make it that and uh, work on the rest of the rest of the day. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, it was really cool to hear that you are you're adventurous and trying new cheeses and that kind of stuff. Is there anything in the in the dairy aisle that you've been wanting to try but you haven't? Like something that you've had your eye on that you're like, hmm. Like I look at the Magnum ice cream bars and I'm like, I should try those. <laughs> I should try those. Uh, everybody should try those. Those are. <laughs> I don't I don't really eat ice cream bars, but my goodness, those magnums are sent from heaven. Like little really? things are bringing them down. Yes. And I've never I, had one of those. I don't know if you can find them, but there's little they're, they're called magnum. <laughs> magnum? You might see them in London, Babette. I did, I did, but they're different it's different packaging. It was Babette, I was like, we should get those. There's mini. And so you can try all the different si the different flavors. Oh my gosh. So good. You know what? I have to say I'm not a huge I ice cream person. I know that's that's as bad as saying you don't like chocolate, but <laughs> but I always have ice cream. I always have ice cream in the house because my baby calf also loves ice cream. So there's always ice cream there. And, and every once in a while I'll have some, but I'm I'm much more on the savory side of the aisle than I am on the sweet side of the aisle. So you don't make ice cream cakes? That's like my favorite thing of summer is making ice cream cakes all the time. Okay, tell me how to do that. Um, the one that I make most often is a chocolate banana one, so it's just like ganache, and I'll make the you know the chocolate and cream, and put that down graham crackers, long slices of banana, like slice lengthwise, and then I'll put in whatever ice cream you want in your chocolate banana, phenomenal thing, and then freeze that, and then do another layer. So you know it's chocolate and banana. So what? Peanut butter ice cream goes well. Like basically every Ben and Jerry's flavor would go well. Coffee. I love coffee ice cream. So I love I love making ice cream. That's interesting. You like coffee ice cream, but not cream in your coffee. That yeah. is, you're like a riddle. You're. A riddle. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get that figured. You know, I do wanna do wanna put this shout out. We have about five minutes left of the show, but I do wanna say, um, Stephen Chavez ch uh, chimed in on Google Plus and says, "I love my half and half versus the sugary creamers." That uh, Renee, one, one of your people. <laughs> I can always add cinnamon. Listen to what he adds to it, though. This may be your inspiration, Renee. I can always add cinnamon or grated Mexican chocolate on top of the coffee. Oh. Yeah. Delicious. And then Stephen Swimmer also chimed in and says, Aida is speaking my language because I'm a guy who is not going to bake from scratch, but I could totally roll with pre-made dough and no baked cheesecakes. That's right. And then also he said that you're making he's you're making him very hungry and he's like, What diet? I think I have to try the potato snacks. Very cool. And he also said this is the first international kitchen party we've had where we've had some, we've been trying to get guests who are overseas to, to actually be part of the show, but the timing never works out. So I'm, I'm the first guinea pig that I'm proof you can be up at 1 o'clock in the morning and participate in Kitchen Party and be normal. <laughs> Although I wish I did have a cocktail. That would be good. Oh, I should have made a dairy cocktail. That would have been really fun. Oh, so are you doing this? Are you, Aida, are you doing anything for National Dairy Month in particular on the blog, or what's, what's happening? 
No, I mean, we're just kind of spreading the word that, you know, dairy's the word this month, and you should just be all about it. In <laughs> fact, I think it's tomorrow that's National Donut Day, and what goes best with donuts, aside from coffee, I would say a glass of milk. <laughs> that is true. Totally, I, I totally true. That. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we came up with a, the recipes that we talked about, um, and then later this summer we're going to come out with, we've done these kind of um, Greek salad tostadas that we've got going up, so there's a lot of recipes that are constantly up on Easy Home Meals. Um, okay, I just looked at Easy Home Meals, and they had, wait, it just flew by, uh, a compound butter on a steak. Oh, my God, did you see that, Aida? A uh, Blue cheese butter topping for steak. Okay, you I have to. That. I do that a lot. I do that a lot. I have um, I have a, a group of friends that I went to college with that we like to get together and make these ridiculous meals like steaks with compound butter or you know stuffed burgers back when that was like the trend or whatever. So that's the kind of stuff that I would make for them for sure. I mean, okay. Rockford cheese or a good Maytag. Put some butter. Then you add a teeny, teeny bit of cognac to that before you make it into compound butter, and it adds so much flavor to the steak. So good. But then you need your Lipitor. But I'm sorry? Then you need your Lipitor. <laughs> Bravo. You know, speak don't eat too many of those. Moderation, moderation. <laughs> You know, next week we have Gabby uh, Dalkin on the show, and you guys are such good friends. Can you can you tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing? Because I've been following you guys on YouTube, and you guys have been doing your own um, sort of secondary shows from your existing shows. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So you know how Zach Galifianakis has his crazy show between two ferns. I would like to liken our side project to that. It is our <laughs> very tongue-in-cheek side project. So it's called Domestic Partners, um, and we are not domestic partners, but what we are are two girls who spend so much time together that we might as well apply for domestic partnership. Um, State of California would probably give it to us. Um, so the other reason we call it that is because we wanted a time to talk about our favorite recipes once a week, kind of how you guys have the kitchen party, and we came up with this concept. So it's a two-minute happy hour, if you will. Um, we usually complain about small stuff, like things that my mom never wants me to complain about, like a bad hair day or seeing my ex-boyfriend at a wedding or something like that. Um, and the coping mechanism tends to be one of our recipes or cocktails or what have you. So um, you can find it on our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash Gabby and Aida. Um, and there's lots of costumes and shenanigans. So um, be forewarned before you watch it. <laughs> No, it's fun. It's really cute. And every time there's a new episode, I always try to make sure I check it out. Um, I see Gabby posts on Facebook, and then I kind of like, I follow the trail all the way back to YouTube. And I definitely have subscribed. So if you guys are watching that, um, subscribe to their channel as well. Also, subscribe to the Bake Space TV channel, which is where we shoot Kitchen Party live every single week. So if you've missed any of our episodes, you should definitely check those out. Now, should we, is there, because we're going we're gonna to get off in a second, but I want to know, is there anything we should ask Gabby? Any insight about her her dairy habits? Because the next week's show, something that'll be kind of fun. Anything that oh, we're um, stacking the deck. I like this. So God <laughs> is being ready for um, a big weekend, and so she has been trying to eat super healthy this week, and she claims that she has not eaten the big block of Colby Jack that's in her fridge. So I want you guys to get to the bottom of that and figure out if she lied to me or <laughs> if she actually didn't eat the Colby Jack because. Most of the time, she's eating the Colby Jack block. That's how she rolls, which I'm all for. A whole block. That's amazing. <laughs> Not all at once, but you know. <laughs> See, that would mean me. I would eat it all at once. That's the Although, biggest problem. Although, have you, have you ever had her queso fundido? Because she makes a pretty oh. good one. It's yes. a three cheese queso that has um, some peppers in it. Pretty good. He's yeah, from Arizona. Yeah. You know, that, sounds so. that sounds awesome. Well, um, where can people find you online? I want to make sure people know. Um, and then also, if you can give us just a preview of some of the recipes you guys are going to be rolling out this, um, the, this over this next month mm -hmm. and where they can find those recipes. And um, Sure. So I'm at Aida Mollenkamp on all social channels. Um, and then my website is um, AidaMollenkamp.com. 
Um, those are the places I hang out most. Um, as far as recipes for NFRA, we've done a lot for, for Dairy Month. So we have the prosciutto parm pinwheels that Renee has so kindly tweeted out. We have the um, potato nests. And then we have one of my all-time favorite hangover foods, breakfast tacos, coming up. Um, and then we have those blueberry peach popsicles. And then we have the Greek tostadas I was talking about. And then later in the summer, we have um, a actually, a, to Renee's talk again, at the ricotta orange cheesecake type bars that would be perfect late summer all the way through holiday entertaining. So pretty much every few weeks, we've got new recipes going on. Now, when you guys post those recipes, will you use the Kitchen Party hashtag so that the folks who are following the show now, they'll be able to see that throughout the month? That'd be really cool. I will ask the ladies to make sure that happens. We will do our awesome. best. Well, cool. Well, will you come back to Kitchen Party again? Please. Thank you for having me, you guys. And <laughs> just staying up, Babette. I feel so like really special that you stayed up in the late time zone. <laughs> for, for you, the world. <laughs> All right, guys. For those of you who are uh, tuning in, we totally we love that you're here. Uh, we will see you next Thursday. Uh, Gabby Dalkin from whatsgabbycooking.com is going to be joining us. We're going to be talking about really interesting uh, summer recipes to keep you cool. And also, Renee is going to be back um, like as my co-conspirator every single week. We've been having a really good time. Except, Renee, I really like how you do our opening, so I may have to have you start doing the opening more regularly. <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like I would fumble that a little bit. I started looking at an email from my boss, and I was like, uh, oh, wait. <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing something else, so I apologize. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. <laughs> no, you were fantastic. You were great. So uh, we will see you guys later. If you guys have any questions throughout the week or if you want to follow some of the recipes, use the Kitchen Party hashtag, and we will see you soon. So thank you so much, Aida, for joining us, and uh, come again. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.